good afternoon YouTube from Nick the Gardener so this honestly is doing really well still going and it's just started to put the little seed heads out which turn white and all papery um, wildflowers in here they're still doing okay looks like we've got another little honesty there for next year so that's all good they're biennial so this year that'll just grow and uh yeah next year will be hopefully looking as nice as this one so i'll give you a little look at the garlic and um this one here is casablanca hardneck and i've got two rows of those and uh, we're looking pretty good really very happy with how we're doing it's uh, the best garlic I've grown by up to this date. I mean, obviously, <coughs> I didn't put garlic in last year of the allotment because I didn't have it have the allotment then. But um, yeah, I've grew garlic in pots before at home, and uh, I did okay some years. Some years were rubbish. But I'll be honest, back then I didn't really have much idea what I was doing. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with these so far. And uh, yeah, these, this keeps on happening where it sort of grows in the, I don't know if it's growing too fast, you can't separate it off or whatever, I don't know, I don't know if I should put it off. Well, it's happening there as well, can you see it? It's sort of separated from down here and it's, I just think it's trying to put out loads of new leaves. It's growing really well and uh, yeah, really excited to see what happens when I pull this up. So this last row back there is Germidor. And that's a soft neck. And that actually looks like it's sending up a flower. Flower spike there. There and on that one. And on this one as well. In fact, look at that. That's sort of weird little growth on that, that is. But, uh, yeah, it looks good. And uh, beetroot, multi sown beetroot. I'll just put it out here thinking, oh, just, you know, it can chance it with all the predators out here. But uh, so far, sorry, fingers on the screen. Luckily, nothing's eating it. And as you can probably see, I've got more mulch. So everywhere has been mulched up with grass now, even more than the potatoes. So have a little look at the onions now. And uh, considering they're just tiny little seedlings a few weeks back, they really started to shoot up and fatten up nicely. We've had uh, some quite nice wet weather and that. A little bit of heat and a bit of sunshine. But uh, yeah, I think onions would like a bit of cooler weather. I don't know, I could be wrong. But yeah, they're looking all right really. And the multi sown spring onions are doing okay. Little peony in corners. Definitely got two flower heads on it. Maybe another little one there. But, uh, and we'll see what they're doing. I've got a little self-set nasturtium in there from last year. And these bulbs are going to flower soon. They're really pretty when they come out. Some of the purple sprite and broccoli is now going to flower. So I'm going to have to get in and pick some more of this. This one's definitely looking awesome. I'm going to have some of that tomorrow for dinner. Again. <laughs> I'll probably end up giving the rest of it away as well because I'm a bit sick and tired of it now. But uh, I've given some away to my customers and some neighbours and stuff. So these are my second earlies in here. And uh, they are Kestrel um, and Charlotte. And uh, yeah, they're just starting to come through now. And uh, although they've been... Well, actually, I don't know if that's frosted. I think that's just discoloration. Well, discoloration of the leaf. But yeah, they got frosted a little bit. We'll just snapped a little bit off there. Better be careful. In fact, look, it's still it's starting to put roots out there, look. Cover that back up. <laughs> so second, uh, first early, sorry. They were looking pretty healthy, considering the other day they were frosted. This is the one I showed you what was frosted the other day quite badly. And uh, yeah, that looks like it's pulling through okay. And uh, I've re-mulched this with grass as well. So there's a good, you know, it's a good inch or two of grass there. Uh, these are potatoes over here. These two, first two pots 
with volunteer potatoes what I dug out of the bed behind me and uh, these six fabric bags here are just from my um, own sieve, safe seed Maris Piper from last year <clears throat> and I put quite a few in a pot, I think it was five in each pot we'll see how they do, they weren't very big potatoes but Jason had a good idea from Clive's Conundrum Garden to um, help keep the moisture in and cool, um, keep the pots cool, there's mound wood chips around them. So I've done that and um, these two are just on the soil so they can root through, they're in bottomless pots so they can root through if they need to. These fabric pots are in drip trays underneath there so there's a, um, <coughs> three pots in each drip tray and that's just to help to keep the mo um, moisture and water them, really, obviously. <laughs> so the raspberries are looking a bit yellow again. And I think that's because they're probably autumn flowering. And I didn't chop them right back down to the um, ground. So I think that's why they've gone yellow like that. So at least I know these ones are all autumn, maybe apart. From, yeah, in fact, they're all autumn, I think, by the looks of that. <clears throat> So these two potatoes here, these are the ones that are in my greenhouse in the little pots. And because I've managed to get a couple of the bigger pots from a customer today, I thought I decided to up pot them. So this has got uh, two Swift in it, and that's got two Colleen in it. Um, so yeah, just repotted them in there. Um, I have actually put a mole trap just here because I noticed there's a couple of mounds here and when I dug down here, there's a run going along here. So I've put a little trap in there and it hasn't gone off yet. But I did put a trap, <coughs> excuse me, in this first brassica bed over here and it did go off, but there was nothing in it. But I think the mole may have set it off and it may have spooked him to go elsewhere. So fingers crossed, I've um, pushed down all the little sort of tunnels and stuff and tried to firm all the plants back in in this one. And in that one over there, I did most of it. But there's a, in fact, there's a little bit there. It might be new there. But I put another trap in over here after that other trap. And that didn't go off. And then I found that new little run over there. So fingers crossed, I may have scared it off. I'll have to get in and just push that bit of soil down. Because then I'll know that if he's been back or not. Because up the moment, yeah, he may have been back actually, looking at that. A little bit here around here so i might have to move that trap over this side tomorrow but uh, we'll keep on his case and uh keep him on his toes oh look there's just a couple of ducks decide to come wandering across my plot there's one there and there's one there oh, that's good you can uh, eat any slugs or anything if you want <laughs> didn't notice them walking up <laughs> So yeah, the brassica beds anyway, they're not looking amazing. I think um, a lot of the plants have got stunted by the weather and the mole. And there's been, it's been so wet, there's been quite a few slugs about. And that one there looks quite slug eaten. But um, some of them are doing all right. If they can just uh, pull through, um, we'll be doing okay. So this bed, not looking too bad although some of these plants are definitely stunted uh, so the mole when he was in here by the way this is where my gladiator f1 parsnips are so if he's gone underneath them they're pretty much all ruined but i've got a few little um radishes in between that i've pulled out and uh got some in here most of them are split though to be honest there's a few little nice ones but uh, because we've had so much weather, like I keep saying, wet weather, sorry, they've all, well, not all of them split, but some of them split, but we still eat them, give them a good wash out. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I'm thinking I might have to replant some of these things in here if uh, if I don't pull through. I mean, that chard looks like a real, real nice red colour. The lettuce is finally doing all right now, though. What, ones that survived what I put in originally, the Lolo Rosso there, and I think that one might be, well I'm not sure because it was a mixed pack, but uh, not doing too bad. This uh, spinach here is doing okay. So the compost, this middle one has now shrunk down, the other day it was bulging up quite a bit, 
and the temperature is saying almost 150, maybe 149 maybe. So that's doing pretty well. I was going to turn it today, but um, I'll probably get in there tomorrow now and do it. Um, and just to show Jason how many twigs and stuff I had in my compost, I can't really uh, put that in any pots or anything. So this is all in the in my compost what I sieved out and uh, yeah just to help keep the air in really because I knew there's quite a few grass clippings to help stop it go anaerobic really so yeah just give you a little side peek in the compost there so it's been in there like three days now I think and it's shrinking down quite nicely I'm going to try and turn it I don't want to turn it into all, with all those twigs and stuff so I want to try and keep this one half decent um, turn that one into here when I start a new fresh pile, I'll put it in that one with all the fresh stuff. I mean, with all the old twigs and stuff. So I've still got more grass clippings, which I'm going to mix through when I turn it tomorrow. Um, the raspberries over here, I think most of these are summer ones, because not many of them have gone yellow. So at least that's quite a good indicator to me which ones I need to prune back next year. I'll probably label them all up. And the duck's just chilling out on Dave's plot there. Oh, this one's chilling out over it, look. Hello, Mr. Duck. Oh, actually, yeah, that's a, that's a female duck. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the other one's here, look. Allotment date with ducks. <laughs> so here's my single seed potato. I'll zoom back out, sorry. So you can see where I've taken the cuttings from them. And um, hopefully they'll heal up quite nicely. I've taken um, nine cuttings and uh, so far at home they're all doing all right. They've not drooped down and I think they're all looking quite perky. And I've also added about another 100 litres of compost and some uh, horse manure to this. So I don't think I'll be topping this one up anymore. I might put some grass clippings on it, but that'll be about it, I think, for now, for that one. Something has been digging in the strawberry bed as well. But I don't think it's a mole because I put chicken wire underneath. So that's, um, yeah, I don't think you can get in there. And you can't get into here because this has just got drilled holes in the bottom. But I did put some grass clippings in here. And get my hand in there. Look, look at all those worms there, look. Oh, there's hundreds. Wow, look at all that. A little worm party in there, in Worm Island. Yeah. Right. That's good to see. They'll be fertilising the strawberries for me. So, getting quite a few flowers on them now, all looking really good. Got a little lavender there. And this uh, hollyhock's doing really well. My beauty berry, I thought it was dead, because no leaves have come on it or anything, and another customer's got one, and uh, hers is all in flower. I mean, not flower, in leaf. And I thought, oh, maybe I've killed it. But I don't know if you can see, just at the end of my finger, there's one little green leaf there. So I'm hoping, because I just dug it up and transferred it, probably right at the wrong time. In fact, there's another green leaf there. It's probably taken a little while to, to recover. But I'm glad that it has. Or it's starting to, anyway. I look, look at my pear, not pear tree, plum tree, sorry. And, uh, I know it had quite a few flowers on, but I can't see too many plums forming on it or anything. The apple tree is looking really good. It looks like we're going to get some apples this year. And the cherry tree is looking pretty good as well. The rhubarb is going bonkers. It's massive. I have to keep taking it and giving it away because, uh, in fact, I'm going to take some tonight because I need to keep getting it away from the trees. <laughs> Probably not the best place to plant the trees, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm going to plan on digging some of that rhubarb up near the, to the tree. It's a massive crown, and give some away. Because one of the new plot holders uh, wanted one, so I said, "Yeah, you can have some of that if you want." So the asparagus in here is a uh, yeah, it's all bending over at the moment. But I'd rather it d does that than get eaten. So it's protected under here at the moment. In fact, I've got another spear coming up there. So I think I've got like one, two. I'm hoping there's another one in the middle here. So three, four, five crowns 
and two at the far side over there. Um, and that one there is looking like it's going to have flowers on it already, which is not a good sign because that means it's a, a female and you ideally want male asparagus. So it puts in all its, all its energy into making the spears. Um, and this one looking okay, but I did harvest one there the other day, which was looking quite fat and I couldn't resist it. But that's all I'm going to harvest this year, just that one spear. And this one actually looks like it might be a, a female too. So the meadow's little flower bed, the little breeze is just still clinging on. Got some little wild flowers in there, little dinosaur down here hiding. But these hollyhocks are really filling out now. I'm really excited to see what colour they are. Because a customer gave me a load of seeds and it was mixed sort of pinks and dark reds and stuff like that, maroons and that, so it's gonna be really nice. Uh yeah, so hopefully the sweet Williams will flower soon. Looking forward to seeing what these little wild flowers are, what are sprinkled in around everywhere. Uh, yeah, not too sure really. Maybe giant nutweed or something. But uh, yeah, it's all filling up nicely now. I've got some Solomon seal in this pot here, which I do need to pot out soon somewhere. And the comfrey behind it there is just looking really nice, deep purple flower. Uh, the customer gave me some pots and I was going to empty them all out and I didn't and something's growing in that one now. I haven't got a clue what that is. <laughs> so if anyone's got an idea what that is, please leave it in the comments. Thank you. So yeah, it looks like these are going to be sending up a flower spike soon, the hollyhocks. Um, I bought some net which I need to deploy over the gooseberries and the ras um, red currants, you see there's like little gooseberries forming. I mean, that one's quite a big one there already. But uh, yeah, before the birds get them, these were absolutely delicious last year. Me and Meadow loved them, so we don't want to lose these. So that's going to be my main priority this weekend is to get a little cage put over here. Yeah, and then the next priority is obviously sorting out the shed. So yeah, thanks for this uh, tour. Staying with me, I'm just going to get the leachate out of worm tropolis. Out of worm tropolis. There's quite a bit in there, really. So, yeah, so it's a good job it's not your in. <laughs> well, it's worm weed, something really. So, what I'm doing with that at the moment is just pouring it in here. Sometimes pour a little bit in here as well. Drink. It's been raining quite a lot, so I haven't had to walk that yet. So uh, yeah, I'll give you an update at Wormtropolis soon, because this video is getting on a bit. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it's doing. It's shrunk down quite a bit now, looking like in there. So uh, hopefully the worms are munching down on everything in there. So thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon in the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.